Okay. Oh. Oh. Ah. Oh. It is a good collectivation this week. We are going to talk about Jethro Tull's 1969 album, Stand Up. Now, I'm always fascinated by bands that are huge in the UK and can't get arrested on the US side. It's crazy. I mean, apparently we're a stodgy sort when it comes to our classic rock. Think about it. Thin Lizzy, uh, the one song's okay. Slade, only if Quiet Riot does it as a cover. Free, they're all right now. Get it? <laughs> anyway, um, and then there's Tull. Four shaggy dudes that write folk songs about the English woodlands. One of them is in a cod piece, jumping up and down on one leg with a flute. And the U.S. were like, hell yeah, we love this shit. Odd as it seems, Tull were always huge in the U.S.A., the love affair going all the way back to their sophomore album, Stand Up, a record that found the band pushing past the blues hues of their debut in favor of a more folk-driven experimental sound, fueled by the technicolor guitar of new recruit Martin Barr, who actually replaced short-time villain Tony Iommi. Yeah. Here he is, listed as Martin Lancelot Barr. I'm not sure of the medieval terminology it was a bold move for the band one of many divergent paths that tall would take throughout their long musical career recorded at morgan studios in london in 1969 stand up is 10 songs mostly in the lean three to four minute range that run the gamut from slow blues to thundering rock to mandolin charged anthems all of it fascinating and all of it absurdly british Let's play a song. This is called Don't Want to Be a Fat Ophthalmologist. It's actually just fat man. Don't want to be a fat man. People would think that I was just good fun. Would rather be a thin man. I am so glad to go on being. One aspect of the band's sound rarely mentioned in reviews of this record are the rhythm section of drummer Clive Bunker and bass player Glenn Cornick, both who deliver shit-hot performances in every track. Oh, yeah, they did. The album kicks off with nasty blues creep of A New Day Yesterday, a cut that juxtaposes Anderson's lower-end croon with smoking blues harp and dazzling cymbal abuse from Bunker. It is not long before the folk elements at the edge of the debut are brought center stage, namely the sprightly bongo and flute workout that is. Jeffrey goes to Leicester Square. Anderson remarking, you listen to the newsmen on TV. You may fool yourself, but you do not fool me. How great was that song we just played for you, Fat Man? I mean, great stuff. And one thing about Early Tall that I hadn't really realized until I kind of revisited it this week is... Like we said, uh, the drummer, Clive Bunker, fantastic, right? But a lot of the percussion, especially on the folksier stuff, is just them banging on things. Like, it's almost like, well, we could have the drums here, but you just bang on my guitar case a little bit. There's a lot of that. If you listen closely, you'll see that. You'll, you'll hear that in a lot of their music. Anyway, um, Fat Man is guitars battling mandolins and a bona fide bongo solo with lyrics about being a fat man. But make no mistake, this is no Piccadilly stroll through acoustic numbers. Stand Up is a colossally heavy record for the time. Even the take on 18th century composer Johann Sebastian Bach's lute piece, Bore, comes across dark and menacing, with Anderson's gasps and shrieks between the melodies adding distinctive charm. Of course, the disc crown jewel is the rumbling workout of Nothing is Easy, with Anderson's sunny vocal performance directly in contrast to the absolute battle between ironclad bass lines, squealing guitar, and grandiose stick flash of the highest order. Stand Up went all the way to number 20 on the Billboard album chart and has long been certified gold. The band's stock would continue to rise with subsequent releases that would meet with both critical acclaim and healthy sales on both sides of the pond. How they convinced the record company to pay for that pop-up album cover for only their second release is still beyond me. If you think about it, you hear the stories of like these bands... Um that needed American producers like Rick Rubin or Mutt Lang to, no, no, no more of that English pussy talk. Do you want to make it on the side of the pond? It's gasoline, not petrol. Let's hear it again, right? Meanwhile, you have Tull writing songs like, thank heaven for Dr. Bogenbroom. 
I mean, not giving a fuck. Absurdly British. Anyway, so this is Nothing Is Easy. Nothing is easy. You'll find that the squeeze won't turn out so bad. Your fingers may freeze. Worst things happen at sea. There's good times to be had. So if you're alone and you're down. This is the Snaggletooth Rock and Roll Podcast.